Hello, how are you guys? Hola, como están todos ustedes? Today I'm going to be talking about risk re, uh, reduction because there is a misunderstanding about the word risk. When we talk about risk, we talk about absolute risk or relative risk. Quiero hablar ahora de los riesgos, los riesgos de reducción. Hay una mala interpretación en cuanto a lo que significa riesgos, los riesgos absolutos o los riesgos relativos. Y de eso voy a hablar y voy a hacer, un, voy a hacer unos cuantos ejemplos en base a cáncer, en base a diabetes, eh, en base a procedimientos que están pasando hoy en día, ¿ok? Que nos va a ayudar a nosotros a entender un poquito más cuando se habla de riesgos. So I'm going to be using uh, statistics. I'm going to be talking about cancer and diabetes and some pharmaceutical uh, medications. Um, to just make a point and emphasize uh, what do we really mean when we talk about risk or risk reduction. I hope you like this. And once again, this is going to be bilingual. And please, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Hi, I will emphasize that I have no conflicts of interest. I'm going to be mentioning a few uh, medications. I'm going to be mentioning a few sites. I don't work for none of them. All the things I do is because of educational purposes. Hoy quiero decir ahora que yo no tengo ningún conflicto de interés, aunque vaya a mencionar instituciones científicas o tal vez medicamentos eh, para esto que estoy haciendo. Solamente lo hago por dar una educación para que las personas puedan tener una mejor guía en dónde buscar o dónde seguir. Eh, compañías científicas o instituciones científicas o científicos para que puedan hacer un mejor juicio de lo que quieran hacer en esta parte de la medicina o de lo que nos rodea hoy en día. As always, uh, these are my references. I put it at the beginning. Um, this is just letting you know where I got, uh, where I gathered the information that I'm going to bring to you guys. Um, also, um, these are the links that you could just uh, write it down or go into it and you will see all the supports of the things that I'm going to be talking to you today. Thank you very much and I hope you like this. Esto que está aquí está representando las referencias científicas o las instituciones científicas de donde yo he tenido esta información que voy a traer a todos ustedes. Independientemente de todo, esto es para que ustedes puedan tener una línea científica de dónde buscar o corroborar la información científica que yo le vengo a traer a todos ustedes. Muchas gracias. Okay, guys, let's talk about what we know as absolute risk reduction versus relative risk reduction. First, what do you understand by risk? Vamos a hablar primero de el contraste que hay entre el riesgo absoluto de reducir algo en contra del de riesgo de reducción relativo. Esto es para que nosotros tengamos una idea a lo que nos referimos con el riesgo, con lo que significa la palabra riesgo o factores de riesgos. Risk means the chance that an event will happen. El riesgo significa el chance de que un evento pase. Eso es lo que quiere decir esto. If we talk about diabetes, and we talk about diabetes risk, that means the chances a person will get the disease diabetes. If we talk about cancer risk, it means uh, the chances that one person have of getting cancer. So, cuando hablamos de riesgo, lo que estamos es especificando qué cantidad o qué porcentaje o qué chances hay de que si hablamos de diabetes, tú tengas o seas diabético. De que si hablamos de cáncer, tú obtengas el cáncer o tengas cáncer. A eso que nos referimos con los riesgos. A cancer risk factor is anything that increases a person's chances of getting, let's say, cancer. If it's diabetes, diabetes. If it's tuberculosis, tuberculosis. If it's pneumonia, pneumonia. If it's an autoimmune disease, an autoimmune disease. Los factores de riesgo, por ejemplo, para el cáncer, 
lo que representa es ese porcentaje de incremento o de alto riesgo en el cual la persona pueda o tener cáncer o desarrollar cáncer o desarrollar tuberculosis o una enfermedad respiratoria o diabetes o una enfermedad autoinmune. A eso que se refieren los factores de riesgos y si estamos hablando específicamente de factores de riesgos en cáncer, estamos hablando de a nivel de cáncer, de qué factor, de qué cantidad de riesgo, de qué porcentaje tú puedes detener, desarrollar o pasar esta enfermedad. Yes, most risk factor do not directly cause cancer. And I want you to understand that. Some people with several risk factors never develop cancer, while others that have no risk factors, they do develop cancer. Sí, cuando tenemos factores de riesgos a alto, no necesariamente esto quiere decir que tú puedes tener cáncer o cualquier enfermedad. Es decir, que tú puedes tener en tu cuerpo eh, enfermedades o historias eh, familiares que te, que te conllevan a ti a ser una persona que puedes desarrollar X tipo de problema inmune o de cáncer, por ejemplo. ¿Ok? Pero también tenemos personas... Okay, que no tiene ningún solo factor de riesgo y estas personas desarrollan cáncer. ¿En qué? ¿Cómo es que yo puedo calcular eso? Y ahí es donde viene lo que se llama Relative Risk Reduction y Absolute Risk Reduction. And this is how we measure this, kind of, getting like, 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 like an average and uh, basing in a specific formula that is known as a Relative Risk Reduction and or absolute risk reduction. Another factors or many factors that contribute to many risk factors are aging as we get old, family history of whatever disease, using tobacco, smoking, being in an obesity state, uh, the use of alcohol, has immunosystem deficiencies, being exposed to toxins, being exposed to radiation, Those are the most common things that we could see that may have you in a high risk in developing whatever disease. So, los factores más comunes que nos llevan a nosotros a desarrollar o estar a alto riesgo de desarrollar cualquier tipo de enfermedad o cáncer está primero la vejez, segundo la historial de la familia en base a cáncer, uh, el uso del cigarrillo, el, el estar obeso, el, la toma de alcohol o el, o el ser alcohólico, vamos a decir así, deficiencias inmunes del sistema, del sistema autoinmune, expuesto a toxinas o expuestos a radiación. Esto es solamente por hablar unos cuantos de las limitaciones o los percánceres o a lo que podemos estar expuestos nosotros, cre aunque querramos o no querramos, genéticamente o no genéticamente. Now, there was a study um, in diabetic patients in which they calculated the stroke reduction if they take statins. Um, what they did was, normally they have, they have two groups. Normally they will have one group, which is called normally a control group or a placebo group. And then we have the group that we are going to be giving the medication or the studies uh, to see how is the risk factor of dying or reducing whatever study that, that, that we are doing. In this case, we, the study was done in reduction of a stroke in diabetic patients, taking a specific statins through a one through five years, uh, of course, in length of time. Los estudios que vemos hoy en día, usualmente hay, se, se toman dos grupos. Un grupo que se, que se llama el placebo o el grupo de control y otro grupo que es el que va a estar tomando el medicamento o el estudio que vamos a estar haciendo. Um, y de acuerdo a estas estadísticas es que uno puede tener una idea o un averaje de qué cantidad de riesgo esta persona tiene el chance para desarrollar o para reducir uh, una enfermedad. En el caso del derrame cerebral, ¿ok? Um, si este paciente está tomando medicamentos por 1 a 4 a 5 años, ¿qué porcentaje esto reduce el desarrollo de un derrame cerebral? Y eso es lo que vamos a hablar ahora en base a este estudio que, que se ha hecho. Ok, so let's talk about uh, the study that it was done 
by using what they known as a relative risk reduction. So what they did basically, they had about, I would say about 1,000 uh, people in a control group and then in this group here. And then they have also 1,000 people in the other group here. So what they did was that from that 1,000 of each, for the duration of four or five years, they take in uh, a statin, a medication, uh, they evaluated the percentage of how we can reduce a stroke in a diabetic patient. Se hizo un estudio, eh, para que tengan una idea, de lo que son las estatinas en los pacientes diabéticos para ver qué porcentaje de reducción en los derrames cerebrales a los pacientes diabéticos tomando este medicamento eh, 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 garantiza que este paciente eh, va a tener una reducción en derrames cerebrales. So, so independently of, of that, ok, let me erase, ok, um, what they did was that they had a, a group of 1,000 individuals that they were th they were thinking that they were taking the medication statin, but they was not. It was just what they call uh, a placebo, a water pill. All right. And through the years of four or five years, they reported the amount of diabetic patient that did not took the medication and that suffer a stroke. So they found out that in the placebo or control group, out of that 1,000 individual, they uh, had a 28 people that suffered a stroke. In the statin group, this remember, these are also diabetic patients, to this group, they did give statins. And when they give this statin for every day, the, patient, the patients have to take that medication every day for four or five years. After that, they measure, they went into the history to see if from that 1,000 patients who suffer a stroke, and they find out that in the statin uh, group, 15 people out of the 1,000 had a stroke. So in this case, they came to the uh, formula relative risk reduction calculation in which they use the 28 people from the control group they deducted the 15 people from the uh the starting group that suffered the stroke and they divided that by the 28 people on uh on the on the placebo control group and that came up to 46 percentage so the study concluded that if you take statins medication, that there is a 46% reduction in the whole group of developing or uh, reflecting or coming out with a stroke. But this is not just like that, okay? Because in reality, um, there are many things that have to come in between uh, to be measured to see if indeed Taking this medication for real uh, will, con will contribute to reduce uh, uh, a stroke. And that's what we're going to talk in the next slide. Okay, now let's use the absolute risk reduction formula, which is another, uh, another comparison formula that we use uh, in, the, in the identification of risk factor or risk reduction. Now, um, we're going to use the same calculation method, okay? In this case, we will not divide by how many people got stroke, but we are going to divide by the amount of people uh, that were treated uh, in, in, with this medication, in this case, a statin. Esta es otra fórmula que se conoce como eh, el riesgo de reducción absoluta. Eh, tiene casi la misma forma que vamos a utilizar, la misma cálculos. La diferencia es que aquí vamos a dividir 
eh, o vamos a restar, perdón, a los 28 a que tuvieron el derrame cerebral del placebo, del control, menos los 15 que estaban tomando medicamento y que tuvieron el derrame cerebral, pero dividido en este vez, en este caso, entre la cantidad total de pacientes que estaban siendo tratados con las estatinas. Y este resultado fue 1.3. So, as you could see, uh, with the absolute risk reduction, in which we're going to take the 28 uh, stroke patients in the placebo group, we are going to subtract uh, to the 15 patients that were taking medication, statins, And whatever we get, we're going to divide that by the 1,000 people that were treated with the medication, and it came up to 1.3%. Now, look at the big difference of what is a relative risk reduction versus an absolute risk reduction. The relative risk reduction said that 46% will have a reduction in, 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 in having a stroke, but the absolute risk reduction said that we're only going to have 1.3 reduction in uh, 1,000 people taking all this medication uh, and reducing uh, a stroke. That is the difference between uh, uh, relative risk reduction versus absolute risk reduction. In another word, plain and simple, what we really want to know, if I treat X amount of people, with X medication, whatever it means. It could be chemotherapy, it could be radiotherapy, it could be for, for cholesterol, it could be for diabetes, it could be for whatever, okay? I want to know what is the amount of, of, uh, uh, of percentage that if I give any treatment that will reduce either mortality or a stroke or a heart attack or cancer, it doesn't matter. So, lo que yo quiero saber al final del día es, si yo le doy a un medicamento un tratamiento a un paciente por qué cantidad de tiempo, eh, qué porcentaje ya sea para cáncer, para infartos, para derrame cerebral, para problemas autoinmunes, para diabetes, qué porcentaje tengo yo eh, que darle a mi paciente medicamento para reducirle que esta persona, que este paciente desarrolle una vez más o derrame cerebral o un paro cardíaco o cáncer o un problema de autoinmune o, o diabetes. Y eso lo vamos a ver en el próximo slide. So, if I need to know the number that I need to treat, I will use this formula, the NNT, meaning again, number needed to treat. In this case, it will be one over the absolute risk reduction. In this case, it's one over 0.013, which equals to 77 in this case. If I do this, uh, this, uh, this will let me know specifically that one divided by the absolute risk reduction, I have to treat 77 people to save only one person from getting a stroke. This is like telling a patient with diabetes that if they take a statin every day for four to five years, we can reduce a stroke by 46%. If I treat you with a statin every day for four years or five years, there is one in 77 chances that you will get a stroke. So when we give percentage to people that do not understand how they got it, it's misleading because they don't understand how they got this percentage. This is not real. It doesn't mean it's bad. It's just that it's misleading, right? They both good the absolute risk reduction and the relative risk reduction, but they give you different information. But we need to take into context that many people do not understand what this percentage means. Again, for another example, a woman whose mother had breast cancer is at least twice as likely to have a breast cancer than a woman that who does not have the same family history. Maybe because it's genetic a mutation that is linked to breast cancer. So, so before we decide to, to, to tell people that um, if you take this medication, it has a 46% reduction, first we need to let the people to understand which formula we use and what came about 
with more information that we have to talk about. Was it age related? They were obese. Um, they had uh, they have all the comorbidities. There is so many things. What is the amount of people are surrounded the family that has genetic problems? So there is so many things that goes involved. So um, it's not it's not good to uh, provide a specific uh, percentage saying that this will reduce this if we are not giving the total picture. So, mirando lo que yo quiero saber en realidad, qué cantidad de pacientes yo necesito tratar, yo uso esta fórmula. Uno sobre eh, lo, que, lo que nosotros conocemos como el riesgo de reducción absoluta. En este caso, uno sobre 0.013, eso me da un 77. ¿Qué quiere decir eso? Que para yo, eh, eh, que en 77 personas, yo dándole medicamento, solamente una persona no va a tener un derrame cerebral. Y por eso es que um, si yo le dijera a un paciente que está tomando, que, que es diabético, toma estatina por 4 o 5 años y esto te va a reducir un 46% de que te dé un derrame cerebral. Esto no es correcto. ¿Por qué? Porque no hemos hablado si esto es específicamente un riesgo absoluto de reducción o un riesgo relativo de reducción. Las dos cosas son importantes, nos dan informaciones, pero no es todo. So, cuando alguien está hablando de un porcentaje, ¿de qué tú me estás hablando? ¿Me estás hablando del de factor de riesgo de reducción absoluto? o el factor de riesgo relativo. Entonces, esa es la cosa que podemos mirar. También, si tú te pones a pensar, como otro ejemplo, um, tú eres uh, la hija, en el caso de una mujer, eh, que tu mamá tenía cáncer de seno, pues tú tienes dos veces más eh, eh, el riesgo de tú desarrollar o, o venir con un cáncer de mama. Tal vez, ¿por qué? Porque tal vez tú tienes una información genética que algo mutó y eso te lo pasaron genéticamente tu mamá a ti en contraste con una persona que no tenga ninguna familia o historia familiar de un cáncer de seno por eso no es bueno eh, que ustedes llévense de, de, de que ustedes se lleven de porcentajes sin entender la fórmula primero de risk reduction ok y meaning absolute or relative So, por eso, tenemos que entender, we must understand when we give percentage, is this a relative risk reduction over absolute risk reduction? ¿Es este porcentaje, un porcentaje que viene de relative risk reduction o de un risk reduction absolute? Esa es la pregunta que tenemos nosotros que tenernos o que hacernos. So, let's make a review. Understanding the difference between absolute and relative risk. Um, first, let's define one more time what is an absolute risk. Is the chance that a person will develop a disease during a given time. This identify how many people are at risk for disease in the general population. Relative risk compare the risk of diseases between two groups of people and it compares one group with certain risk factor for a disease, for example, to a cancer group risk. So, vamos a hacer un repaso primero otra vez de lo que es el absolute risk y el relative risk. En el absolute risk, esto mide el, 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 el chance, el, el porcentaje de que una persona va a desarrollar una enfermedad o un cáncer. En, en, el, en el riesgo relativo, esto es lo que hace que compara dos grupos y de estos dos grupos él compara cuál de estos tiene un riesgo mayor de desarrollar una enfermedad o un cáncer. So, so um, uh, for you guys, um, Dr. Roger uh, Sehu, I don't know if I'm uh, pronouncing his last name, uh, from Medcram, you could go there. I got this, uh, this uh, example that he got there. Uh, he's very good. Medcram, you're going to love it if you follow him. Okay. Um, um, he got this, but he's talking about COVID-19. It is very good. You, sh you should go into it, okay? Um, so, eh, eh, todo esto que ustedes ven aquí, um, voy a coger un ejemplo del doctor Roger Shul, okay, que uh, él es de Medcram, y, y él tiene algo muy, muy bueno. Pueden ir allá a Medcram, él lo pueden buscar en YouTube, okay? Él usó un ejemplo así como este, pero para el COVID, okay? So, de ahí donde yo saco está este, este ejemplo. So, If, if we are going to, hypothetically speaking, um, get two groups, 
right, that will jump out of a plane, one with a parachute and one without a parachute, okay? And let's say that we have in an airplane 300 people, and those 300 people, none of them have a parachute. And in the other plane or in the other group, we have 300 people, but they have parachute. Vamos a hacer un ejemplo en el cual, por ejemplo, tenemos dos grupos. Eh, de que van a saltar de un avión en donde hay 300 personas con paracaídas y hay otro grupo de 300 personas que van a saltar sin paracaídas fuera del avión. Ya tú estás cogiendo la idea, ¿verdad? So, that means that those one that have no parachutes, as they jump out, we normally think right away that that will be 100% that whoever that jump out of the plane without a parachute will die. We understand that. The same thing that um, the people that have a parachute on the plane and they jump out, there is almost a uh, 100% assumption, let's say, that they will survive because they have a parachute, right? But you have to remember that there are situations that may occur. Like, for example, those with the parachute, maybe there was a defect in the parachute. Maybe they wanted to open the parachute and it didn't open. So there are circumstances that we have to take into consideration. And I'm going to show you that example in the next slide. So, so imagínate que nosotros pensando que nos tiramos de un avión sin paracaídas, pues existe la posibilidad de que no vamos a morir. Pero también existe la posibilidad de que si me tiro con el paracaídas, puede haber un defecto en el paracaídas en el cual también yo muera. ¿Verdad? Entonces esto es prácticamente el ejemplo de lo que se conoce como el riesgo absoluto y el riesgo relativo. So now, following the example, okay, uh, we are going to select two people to jump out of the plane. You know, uh, and remember that we're going to have two groups, one with parachute and the other one without parachute. So, siguiendo el ejemplo previo, vamos a decir que tenemos dos grupos, uno que tiene paracaídas y otro que no tiene paracaídas. Y vamos a seleccionar solamente dos personas de cada grupo. Okay, so um, the relative risk uh, reduction in the parachute and in the non-parachute uh, individual, the formula is like this, okay? Uh, this number represent, uh, the number two represent the people uh, that die in the non-parachutes minus the people that did not or die uh, in the parachute group. Since in the partial group nobody died, so it would be zero. So we will divide, we will uh, deduct that and divide that by two, and that will give us what? 100%. So, so this actually let us know that if you have your parachute out of those two people that jump out of there, if you have where a parachute, there is 100% possibility. 100% uh, 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 relative risk reduction that you will die. That you will die. In another word, if you have your parachutes and you jump out of the plane, based in this relative risk reduction, there is 100% uh, uh, protection that you will not die uh, jumping out of the plane because you have your parachutes. But then, if we go to the absolute risk reduction which in this case, we're going to use the same two people uh, that die in the group, okay, minus uh, the people who die in the uh, parachute group, which was zero, okay, and then, but we're going to divide that through the whole total of participants that were 300, okay, and that will give us a risk of 0.67 percentage. You see the difference? So, Relative risk give us a specific information of what we're looking for, but the absolute risk reduction look on many factors like the amount of people that have been on the studies. But since we only took two people there, you know, you cannot really have a specific uh, 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 data uh, for everything because you did not study or use the 300 people. So what this is telling me is specifically that the number that I needed to treat in this case, okay, it was uh, 0.67 percentage, okay, 
out of one because that's the formula remember one over what we need to actually uh, 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 protect which is the 0.67 percent uh, that will equal to 150 that means that if we treated people let's say 150 people okay but we only selected two people for the study out of those two people only one will die not the two of them it's kind of confusing i know but that's just the way it is so ¿Qué vemos nosotros aquí? Que tenemos dos, 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 dos fórmulas. La fórmula de reducción relativa, eh, de, riesgo, de riesgo relativo, en el cual eh, la fórmula dice que vamos a coger dos personas que no tienen el paracaídas y le vamos a restar eso a las personas que murieron uh, uh, de lo que saltaron con paracaídas, pero como ahí no murió nadie porque tienen paracaídas, en el otro grupo que no tienen paracaídas, esas dos que se tiraron del avión se murieron. Yo so, tengo dos personas muertas, ¿ok? Menos las personas que murieron con las que tiran paracaídas, como es cero, ¿ok? Dividido entre dos. Eso da un 100%. ¿Qué quiere decir eso? Eso sugiere que el riesgo relativo de reducción, si tú te pones un paracaídas, tú tienes 100% de que tú vas a sobrevivir, de que no vas a morir. Pero si vamos a usar la otra fórmula del riesgo de reducción absoluto, en el cual uno vuelve otra vez y es casi lo mismo. Uno coge las dos personas que murieron, menos las personas que murieron en el grupo que tiene paracaídas, en este 00, pero ahora esto se va a dividir entre la cantidad de todos los pasajeros, que eran 300. Y eso me da ahora un valor de 0.67%. ¿Qué quiere decir eso? Que ahora yo voy a calcular, ¿ok? Usando la fórmula que yo necesito para tratar, el cual es 1 sobre el riesgo de reducción absoluto, que en este caso sería 0.67, y eso es igual a 150. ¿Qué me quiere decir esto? Que si yo estoy tratando cualquier paciente, 150 pacientes, pero yo solamente selecciono dos para hacer el estudio, de esos dos, una sola persona va a sobrevivir y la otra va a morir. Eso es todo. So, ¿Qué quiere decir esto una vez más? Que no nos podemos llevar de cuando te da un porcentaje, tenemos que ser claros con el tipo de porcentaje eh, ¿Qué uno se refiere? Se refiere al Relative Risk Reduction, se refiere, se, se refiere al Absolute Risk Reduction. So, so, so what this means at the end of the day is that we need to be specific when we talk about the risk of reduction between relative and absolute, because even though that they give us a percentage, they look to different pictures of different results taken into account from the studies that we are doing. Now, this is just to show you um, that if we have a graph, and this was a study done by the University of Westerns of Australia, okay? Now, and you have the link on the references. If you look at the color, like kind of like what? Green, bluish, let's say, that would be called tre treatment A or the placebo group. And the other color, like kind of like what, like it doesn't, it looks like kind of green, you know, let's say light green, okay, uh, that would be called the treatment B. So if you look at these three scenarios in which we have medium risk, high risk, and low risk, it's almost about the same. The absolute uh, risk reduction is about 25%, meaning that as as the as the intervention of the of their, uh, as the risk go high or as the disease goes high also the treatment uh, of these type of people have to go high too meaning that the absolute risk reduction will go high if the if the disease or something or the treatment goes down also the absolute uh, risk reduction will also go down. So it's, it's like it's like it's like if it goes up, then the absolute reduction risk goes up. If it goes down, then the absolute uh, reduction risk goes also down. So it's not that uh, the the one is better than the other one. Okay, the relative uh, risk reduction is better than absolute uh, rate uh, risk reduction. No, they are both giving a specific good information but to different things not on a specific uh, percentage as people want to portray when they say like 
if you take this medication, if you do this treatment, you will have 45, 50%, 80% reduction of getting whatever transmission or whatever problem. So that's what we have to understand. So, ¿qué tenemos nosotros que entender mirando este riesgo que está aquí? Que esto viene de la Universidad uh, Western en Australia. Esto está en la referencia. En el que a mayor eh, incidencia de una enfermedad, mayor sería el riesgo absoluto de reducción. Y a menor incidencia, eh, sería el menor riesgo absoluto de reducción. Eh, eh, aquí no existe que eh, uno es mejor que el otro. Ambos. El, el, el riesgo eh, relativo de reducción y el riesgo absoluto de reducción, ambos te dan información muy positiva, pero no una es mejor de la otra. No, porque cada cosa da algo específico y diferente. Bueno, muchas gracias por todos ustedes eh, haber compartido conmigo. Thank you for watching. Uh, this uh, introduction to the reduction in risk reduction. Uh, muchas gracias por ustedes participar en esta, vamos a decir, pequeña clasecita de la reducción de riesgos. Okay. Um, I hope you like it. And if there is anything that you would like me to talk about, please bring it on. Uh, subscribe or share this to somebody else. And I hope um, I see you soon. I love this and I'm, I, I, I happily will record and create a lecture based on what you want me to talk about. So, muchas gracias por, por mirar. Espero que si te guste le des esto más hacia adelante para que otras personas puedan suscribirse o participar. Y si me quieren escribir para que yo haga uh, alguna PowerPoint o alguna lectura de algún caso, de alguna enfermedad o cualquier cosa, yo trataré de hacer lo mejor posible. Pasen buenas, cuídense una vez más. Yo soy Dante Joa. Bye bye.